Well, this is a continuation of the helmet video series. And in the last video, we discussed the standard, Australian standard, and how the tests really simulate around about a 21 to 23 kilometer to hour impact, because what they're doing is, is just doing a drop test and the acceleration of the helmet over that distance replicates around about 21 to 23 kilometers an hour. So that is what the helmets are tested to. And you need to be appreciate that unlike cars where they actually do crash tests and they have dummies and sensors and everything like that and actually simulate an accident, that is not done with bicycle helmets. It's pretty much just a drop test where they put a head, a ball in there that simulates the weight of a, of a normal head and it's just dropped. And then if the helmet doesn't fail, or break or whatever, whatever the, the criteria of the standard is, then it passes the test. Now, before we get into the whole guts of the video, I do want to also now reach out to Ukraine. I said this in the last video, the, the fighting is intensifying over there. The Ukrainians are doing a fantastic job of defending their country under an overwhelming enemy. And I really do think that uh, the European group should step in and offer some physical resistance to the Russians. Now, a lot of people think that they may escalate things, but once people are firing and shooting at each other, it's already got to the maximum escalation. And I do believe that Russia has an intent to unify the old Soviet social republic and he's not going to stop at Ukraine. And especially if he takes Ukraine very easily, it's going to give him a lot of confidence to do that further. So I think we need to offer some resistance. If he has a difficult time in Ukraine and taking Ukraine and basically putting in a new government, then he may think twice about extending his aggression to other countries. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Ukraine and my prayers are still with those people. There's a lot of people who have been displaced from their homes. They're in underground and the streets are empty. So it's a very sad affair over there. So let's roll an intro and let's get into basically the helmets and how does the helmet actually work when you have an accident? Now I had quite a few comments and I thank you guys out there for your comments because this topic with helmets has been raging on for many, many years. And if you go onto any forum sites, you've got hundreds of pages of discussions on helmets. And I know that there's a forum called, I think it's called Bicycle Australia, I used to be on it, but you get too many people raving about all sorts of things. But the helmet discussion there keeps flaring up and it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages long. So it's a, a conversation that is very difficult to have and there's a lot of people who are very pro helmets and then there's people who are not. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not negative helmets. I'm not saying everyone shouldn't be able to wear a helmet because what you've got to understand is if you don't mandate it, people can still choose to wear a helmet. It doesn't mean that you are stopping people from wearing a helmet. You're only saying that people have to wear a helmet versus people can choose to wear a helmet. So that's the difference. And, and my, I'm a person who's very much on the side of freedom of choice. And I think the governments should only regulate what they absolutely need to be necessary. And other things where we have a personal impact on ourselves, we should be able to make those choices. But what I'm going to do in this, this specific video, I'm gonna talk about what actually happens when you're in an accident and the helmet has to do its job and actually protect you. Now, I want to look at an overview of how a lot of these safety devices work. And I think the best way to do that is to look at cars because cars have significant safety features and the testing is very, very sophisticated when it comes to modern cars. And not only do they just do basic tests like they do with a bicycle helmet, they do specific crash tests and they have very, very sensitive devices to measure how that car crumbles. They have dummies in there that are basically weighted exactly the same as a human being. And they look at video and do sensors to ensure and see how the 
those those dummies <laughs> if you want to use that word dummies that's what they're called dummies actually react when they have certain types of different accidents and these these tests are done uh, in Australia they're called ANCAP and they test the cars now the whole principle of protecting a person is basically reducing the inertia so if we look at if we look at mass and we're moving forward we know from Newton's laws that once you have a mass moving forward it wants to resist change so it's hard to get it going and it's hard to slow it up and that's why we're braking system we talked about braking systems before you have to turn that connected energy into heat energy but when we're in a car we have systems like seat belts and airbags and crumple zones on the cars to protect us from significant injury so the accident is actually happening but as we hit the object the car starts to crumple and take the energy so you in the actual passenger area of a car is being slowed down gradually as the car's crumpling and then once it gets to a point where that impact now is being transferred to you and you start to move forward in the car we have a seat belt that then starts to stretch and we also have an airbag that that explodes and then once it hits us it starts to deflate so we have the airbag slowing us up and we have the seat belt slowing us up so as it slows us up then our internal organs and parts of our body are not being abruptly stopped and causing internal injuries of our body. Now, this same principle needs to apply to a helmet. A lot of people have a kind of, and I've noticed this from the comment, a lot of people think that the helmet's supposed to break when we have a accident on our push bike, we fall down and the helmet cracks open and somehow that's protected us. And I can see how intuitively people come to that conclusion. But as I just explained in the car, you need to slow things up slowly. And that's the same with your head. Your head has a brain, it has membranes, and the head, if it's if it's severely shuttered because it's quite a heavy, heavy part of your body, your head it actually weighs quite a lot. And then it has an abrupt stop like hitting the pavement then the inside of your brain and everything gets gets bruised and damaged and that's how you can be concussed so what the helmet does is because it's got this polystyrene foam as you hit the ground that foam compresses as does the crumple zone on the car as does the airbag in the car as does the seatbelt in the car so what we're trying to do is slow your head up gradually so that energy is is dissipated into the foam of the helmet now the problem is is that when you break the helmet it's it's the helmet's got to a point where it's actually split or broken then the helmet cannot absorb any more energy because it's, it's basically broken it can't get any more of, of absorption of that energy of your head moving towards the pavement because it's broken so it's going to just split apart the energy is going to make the helmet come apart like this and then your head's going to impact the pavement now it may have done some deacceleration because obviously before it failed the foam would have started to compress but due to that specific accident if that helmet is broken then what's happened is the forces and energies related to the accident exceed the design characteristics of the helmet so if your helmet has if you've had an accident and your helmet's actually broken then it actually has reached its limit of design Now, another thing that, that has always quite amazed me is when we watch these pro pelotons and the guys have an accident or a crash and they might have hit their head on the ground, they quit very quick to give them a new bike and give them a push and off they go. But we don't see them changing their helmets. They don't change their helmets. And as we're aware, if you have a significant impact on a helmet, you should be changed because obviously it's compressed and 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 you can't recompress it. You can't expand it and then recompress it. So it can't do its job. It's It's... It's compromised, and even the manufacturers say this. They say, if you've been in an accident, you should change your helmet. So it's quite, it's quite amazes me the attitude 
that we have in the Pro Peloton. I mean, the UCI, and I've said this before in other videos, the UCI talks about safety, but they allow people to do things that are not as per manufacturer specifications, and they also allow people to hang out of cars and adjust components on bikes. They allow bike riders to basically motor pace them back onto the Peloton, and they're actually touching the back of the car. And we can see this tire marks are on the back of the car. And they do a lot of this stuff that, that you are not allowed to do in normal roads, there's laws. You, if you're within two, in Australia, if you're within two metres back of a car, that's illegal. So it actually blows my mind that we talk about safety, but then with our professional cyclists, we don't adopt those safety criteria. Well, in conclusion, this conversation about helmets, whether they should be mandated or not mandated, the pros and cons for helmets has been raging on for decades. And there was a forum I used to be involved with that's on Bicycle Australia. And that goes on for hundreds and hundreds of pages, probably even thousands of pages. I haven't been on there for years. But it's a big discussion and people have a lot of perceptions about helmets and what they do and why we should wear them or why we shouldn't wear them. But the reality is that I'm trying to put forward here is that the tests only test them to a speed of around to simulate a speed of around about 21 to 23 kilometers now which i feel is not really adequate enough for what a lot of riders ride at and we hear a lot of antidotal stories where someone goes oh i came off my bike and yeah i had a crash and i hit my head on something and my helmet split open and it saved my life or saved my head or whatever but the problem with those sorts of stories is we have no control so as far as we look at a study we go, well, what would have happened if we didn't wear a helmet? Could we simulate the same accident? And that's what they do when they test cars. That's why it's so controlled when they do the tests. And even when they do the drop test, the test of helmet is so controlled so they can make, they can repeat it. But the issue is, is, and what I'm trying to point out here is at lower speeds, and I just had an accident recently where I went over the handlebars, I was trying to bunny hop the curb and I face planted the concrete. My helmet there didn't break, it just dented a bit and it did its job. But if you're going at faster speeds, and let's face it, a lot of us guys are probably tra traveling at 30 k's in, or in excess of, I think that the parameters of the helmets aren't really designed or don't perform in accidents at those speeds. And the reason why I say that is I've heard so many stories that uh, people say that their helmets actually broke. Now guys, you need to realize I've explained how cars are designed to slow you down and this is exactly the same how helmet works to slow your head down now once the foam is compressing it's doing its job it's doing its job and then once it gets to a point where the helmet just cannot absorb the energy more and it breaks your head your head then is free in the helmet it's not the helmet's not absorbing the energy so it's reached its limit and it's it's from that point on is not the accelerating your head and not protecting your head and that's my point guys and a lot of people think that bicycle helmets have this kind of ability to protect you in any accident you know whether i hit a car or i have an inter-vehicle accident or at speeds where i'm coming down a hill and i'm doing 80 100 k's now they are not designed to do that and that's what we need to understand it's not about helmets are good or bad they're just not designed for those sorts of impacts and that's all i'm trying to point out here guys now leave your comments down below and i'd like to thank all those guys that have put their comments forward it's a it's an interesting topic, bicycle helmets, because in Australia, we, it's mandated, and a lot of people have quite a strong argument towards that. So in Australia, it's, it's, a, it's quite um, conflicting, quite a conflicting discussion. But anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Leave your, as I said, leave your comments down below, and I will see you next vid. Cheers.